<laughs> we are learning Kuntris Umayan. Where are we at? Reb Moshe, what does your what does your GPS say? Where are we at? Good question. I'm trying to figure out myself. No, I'll tell you. Wait. We're at the kid, sir. On page um, two eighty five. Kitzer, thank you. Sheishes Yomim, we spoke about, the, the Rashab mentioned the Posik, the Torah, six days a week shall you work. So what did he say? Sheishes Yomim, the six days, in Yonam, Bisfiras Ubavoida. Their application as they are in the emanations, in the spheros, and Ubavoida, their application in real life. What is man's activity? What's man's melacha job? To join, to, to join together, lechaber zmanumokim, time and place. Well, and to unite time and place with godliness. In other words, spiritualize time and place that it's spiritual, it's godly. And, you, and, you, and each day has its virtue. You can't say, I did that yesterday. Well, <laughs> it's not a regular day. It's a new, a new day. In the Sfiris. In, 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 the, in, the, in the esoteric idea of the Sfiris. One second, please. Okay, so each day has its nuance of a svita, so therefore each day requires a reevaluation how to unite our godliness with, with time and space. And this activity is the judgment, whether in Shefa Hanikzov, whether the hashpa, the influence that was designated on Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur, Yove Begashmius, should materialize itself in the physical world, or to remain only in the spiritual world. This kitzer is a clear recipe for what happens daily. V'im, number two. V'im, and whether or not the blessing that's been given to you, even if it were to be materialized in the physical world, should it be and all three matters of children, health, and sustenance, or only in one of them. And the Rav Shab mentioned the famous idea, it is possible through a tzaddik's tefillah, to change from one to the other. Now you see, if you believe this, if you understand it, A, and B, you believe it, many things fall into place. Many, many things in life fall into place. If you don't understand it, or you do understand it, but you don't believe it, then, then, you, then the, whatever, then you're, you know, you, <laughs> and you have questions, you have more questions. But if you understand it, and you understand what a tzaddik is, that he's a, an intermediary between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and B'nai Yisrael, and the tzaddik is a conduit, and the tzaddik, the Abish that says, I give the tzaddik, what does it say in the Gemara? Not in Hasidus, not in Kabbalah. What does the Gemara say? Tzaddik goizer v'akadosh Baruch Hu makayin. A tzaddik decrees and God fulfills. I mean, that's a piece of Gemara, which means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu and, uh, uh, metaphorically speaking, must fulfill what the tzaddik decrees. That's what the Gemara is saying. And why is that? Because Hashem himself, God himself, wants and gives the tzaddik such kayach to, to make a difference and make a change. And if you understand this, you understand another thing which people have a problem with. But Rebbe Yitzchak Bardichev didn't have a problem with. Rebbe Yitzchak Bardichev and Pasha Shoftim writes, one may bow down to a tzaddik. Tell that to many, many Jews around you, they'll say that's idolatry. 
Well, the question is not on Chaim Dalfin or Lubavitchers. It's a question that I believe Yitzchak Baditcher and Pasha Shaftim. And you can look it up yourself. Read it. And you'll see what it says. And by the way, it's not the only statement. Look into the Zayar. You'll see many other such statements. But what's the pshat? So, thank you. I've cited you sources. <clears throat> the question is, so the question is not on you. The question is on the sources. What's the answer? What's the explanation, Avi? The answer is, you're not bowing to the tzaddik. Yeah, physically, maybe you are, according to the Blavi Yitzchuk. But you're bowing to the God within the tzaddik, to the godliness within the tzaddik. You'll say, but every person's that way. You're right, but every person doesn't access it because every person has a lot of shtus and foolishness and, and, and shmutz covering up the chelik elika. And the tzaddik is one that has worked, refined himself, and this person is living with the chelik elika. So what are you bowing down to? The chelik elika, the godly energy in the person. To God? Yeah, that's fine. So I say this because he says, see, if you know what that means? A person, God forbid, is ill. He goes to a tzaddik. He asks for a bracha, and, and, and with either with saying it or without saying it, the story, the Balshemtiv, Baal Shemtiv said it clearly to the people. You want children or you want wealth? Choose your choose make your choice. You're not getting both. And they said, We've had a wealth all our life, we haven't had a child. Here is the money, and he, said, and he says, you're going to become poor. I don't care. We don't care. We want a child. He prays for him, and the child comes. <clears throat> this idea, making a change in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I mean, this is a very, very philosophical, <laughs> a very, very profound idea. How can one make a change in God if God is non-changeable? And the answer is you're not making a change in God. You're accessing another deeper part of Hashem that in that area, in that place, there's room for children or there's room for Parnassah, there's room for health. So until now, you haven't tapped into that energy. And there, so therefore, the bracha hasn't been materialized. Even if you have it in your storage bank, it hasn't been cashed in. This is what we learned yesterday. I don't want to go into it, but yesterday's chapter, maybe out of all the chapters that we learned yet so far in Kuntur Samayim, I think might be the most uh, important one, or or you know, uh, one that that really makes us think and and should give us a deeper understanding of what a tzaddik is, etc. Habal Shemtov, let me just finish the line, and I'll take your question. Habal Shemtov, Nishmasa Eden, the Bal Shemtov, Hichlif, Ashidis Albonim. He exchanged wealth for children for a couple. Yes, yes. Yeah, just everything you just mentioned. How, how is saying the, how is saying the Manolashan connected to this? At, 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 when you go to the... <clears throat> the same, the Manolashan is a, is a, Moshe is referring to what you said, the, the Rebbe's oil, or maybe other people's, other tzaddikim's oil, but in Chabad we say that the, at the oil of the, the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, and the Rabbeim. Basically, it's, it's tefillahs, a, a combined of tehillim, zayhar, and then some general tefillahs, and all of those tefillahs are to awaken a person's connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu vis-a-vis, standing by the particular tzaddik's caver. I hear someone's radio in the background. Maybe someone can close there. Yoni? Ari? Ari? Yes. Yeah, I hear background noise. Please mute yourself. Thank you. Maimer Chof, page 287. We're starting the new Maimer. What? Sorry, just so bottom line is, sorry, so bottom line is the monolution is not necessarily, it's not connected specifically to what we just learned. In a general way, not specifically. In a general way, it's, it's prayers, tfilos, 
that are said, in other words, if you're asking me, are we saying minor lotion to change God, God's mind vis-a-vis -vis the tzaddik that's, that's laying there? The answer is no, that's not, <laughs> we're saying tefillus, consisting of verses of praise and, and, and Zoharic and passages in Zayar, and then some other individual prayers that talk more about the people lying there that you're praying, that you're praying to Hashem to and standing in front of them. But to say that this posik and this passage specifically alludes to that, there is, I, I, I should say, in the, in, the, in the Zoya, in some of the Zoya that you read in the minor Lushen, it does speak directly about this. That's my recollection, but I can't tell you right now which part. You follow what I'm saying? But overall, the minor lotion is not geared to, oh, I'm going to say this now, I'm changing God's will. That's not, that's not, that's not the case. Got it. Okay. Okay. 287. Maimachov, Peter Kalaf. In the fact that man is judged every day, Hudas Rab Yoisi, Bebraisa de Rosh If you look into the Gemara there, it's the opinion of Rab Yoisi in a Braisa. Contracted Rosh Hashanah. However, there's another opinion there. Well, that's Reb Nosen. According to Reb Nosen, Nitan Bechol Shah. It's not that you judged every day; you judged every hour. It gets even better. Shenemani quotes a verse in Eiv Blaregoyim Tivochoneinu, which means you test him each moment. Blaregoyim Rega Tivochoneinu for the word Pchina. You test him every moment. And the question is asked over there in the Gemara Rosh Hashanah, Im Kain, if so, the Rabbi Yosi, the Rabbi Nosen, ain't by Rosh Hashanah, the Chol Yomai Rosh Hashanah, klum, when you didn't show a mile. The Gemara says, if that's the case, what's the difference between Rosh Hashanah and an ordinary day throughout the year? Both are, you're being judged, as far as judgment is concerned, why are we making such a big deal about Rosh Hashanah? How will, um, how will they explain, both Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Nosen, the verse that is used to, to underscore the specialty of Rosh Hashanah, which is, it's a statute for Israel, judgment to the God of Jacob, from Tehillim. The Koyal Rosh Hashanah. So the, the question of the, Rosh, of the Gemara is, hey, you seem to make small change in Rosh Hashanah, because man is judged either every day or every moment. The the eyes of a God are on it, referring to Eretz Yisrael. From the beginning of the year to the end of the year, the Gemara, the Gemara derives over there, the Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah Ladin. That Rosh Hashanah is the Rosh Hashanah for judgment. So the second question of the Gemara is, you're telling me that there's judgment daily and, 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 and every moment. So, again, th this seems to contradict the verse in, in Devarim, which implies that judgment is Rosh Hashanah, and that's it. And that's why we, we have a day Rosh Hashanah. That's question two. Question three. Why are we spending so much time in shul, hungry and tired and bored <laughs> with saying verses of Malchia's kingship? Zechreinah's recollection and memory. For Shafreis and all about the Shafer, Shaim Rosh Hashanah, my um, Uma Yaimu Yomayim. Ma Yaimu Yomayim is an expression. Why should this be distinguished from every day, day and day and two days, every day and every day? There's judgment. So what's this emphasis on Rosh Hashanah, where you spend so much time in the and Malchia is a chreinis and shayfris? One shouldn't think for a moment that Ashab says the Rabbi Yaisi or Rabbi Nosson, according to the both of them, ain't chiddush Rosh Hashanah l'gabi shara yomim. They don't believe there is any novelty in Rosh Hashanah over all other days. God forbid to think that way. Of course there is, but we need to understand their position. 
says the Rebbe, surely there's no disagreement at all. They also know that Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is the Yom Adin. And specifically, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is the Day of Judgment. It says over there in that Sefer, no one disagrees that Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is Yom Adin. All agree, on that day, on those ten days, is when one's um, budget is established for every creature. And that's why we say verses of Malchi Zechrein Zechrein and Rosh Hashanah in order to crown God as king and to access Hashem and say, Hashem, give me panosa and give me more and I need more, etc., etc. The opinion of Malchus that Silus from Rosh Hashanah, the Rebbe Rashab says, from when do we begin building the royal royalty? From Rosh Hashanah, Ad, next page 289, Ad Yom Kippur, and through Yom Kippur. Sha'oz B'Ni'ila, then, Ad Ni'ila, of the tenth day, the Kabbalah's HaMalchus, Mehei Gvulah's Da'atik, we learned this earlier, Malchus, the kingship which we're building, God's kingdom, receives from the five powers of judgment from Atik, the who, and this is, in other words, Malchus gets then a source of strength to be the source of vitality, for the entire year. And Rosh Hashanah, there's another thing that happens, Chevra, and that is that the amount that Hashem gives Chesed into the world for the entire world. The entire year's amount of chesed is going to be decided, it's decided Rosh Hashanah, the Yom Kippur, or Vanila, the Yom Kippur, in Manila, Nechtam, it is sealed, V'nechtach, Kitz was a chesed, and the budget is sealed, the Chol Echel Echel Befrat, V'zel Adivri for every individual specifically, and everyone agrees with this. So, if this is the case, the question is still, what do Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Nossin why, why they're making a point that judgment is daily or moment, every moment. Ella, so the Rashab explains what they're coming to add. The Mikol Mokim, Svidali, Rabbi Yosef, and Rabbi they believe. The other need the Mikol Yehu Mish, but Gomor, Al Kolin, Yonem Lechayle, Ulabrius, Ulachaya. That every day there is individualized, complete judgment on illnesses, sicknesses, and health for life. Someone who had a certain budget of chesed designated for him through those ten, under ten days, although it was already that budget was given to the budgetary committee it's still aloof. You hear that? It's still in the realm of the Senate and the, Con- the, Con- the Senate, the, the, the Congress, the House of Republicans. In other words, it has nothing to do with your bank account. You hear? It's exactly what's happening now. There's a budget now in America, how much stimulus money they're giving. And they're debating whether it should be 600 a week, or 600 or 2,000, whatever the decision will be. But it's all now, it has nothing to do with me. Only once it will become passed as, as law and decided the final decision, what the amount is. And it will be put into my bank account or someone will, you know, uh, you know uh, ask for it and get it. Then it's yours. That's what they say. You can't compare my share the spiritual world of Asiya to the spiritual world of Atsilus. Okay, therefore, after Yucholias we men of Kolash Boys in Yonim although from Malchus to Atsilus, all influence to the physical world is there in a, in a seed form, in an idea form, Mikomak and Nevelash, but if you keep putting him, like Nikbara Mishpat, it hasn't finished. The judgment has not finished. Befeidush, Magiye Machesit. In those days, it doesn't. It, the judgment isn't this chesed of the budget 
means that I'm going to give it to you in, in, in this way in the physical world. That's not decided those days. What's decided then is that there is a budget that has been passed. Whether we will release the funds in this way or whether we will give you this this way, that is a daily and momentarily uh, 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 decision. That's the way the Rashab sees it. Continuing. Or whether you get the influence of Hashem Dashpa in children or in health or in sustenance. I be cool them or everything. I be yonim ruchdiim. Of all it will remain aloof in spiritual matters and in the oilam haba. That's not decided in the those ten days. Vadin va mishpat v'mati yashpo who be best in shilamayla be cholas b'yatzira. Where is this din? Where is this court case taking place in the heavenly court? V'zel vadin o mishpat she bechol yemamish kumeshi this boy. And this happens daily, as we'll explain now. It's a budget of chesed that's drawn to the world in general, to every individual specifically. How much of the kindness is designated for him? This is the primary judgment. Everything's dependent on this. Because Based on the, um, the 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 multitude of the budget for Chesed, so will be the blessing and the good throughout the year. And to exclude that, God forbid, you get very little. So, in other words, in your treasure, in your treasure, the question is: Has how much, how much will Hashem fill your treasure up of chesed? That's decided Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur. How much will you get in actuality? That's decided daily and momentarily. Okay? That, it should be clear. I mean, it's not, I'm not talking French, I hope. Well, come on, this boy, what? Yes. So, so basically you're talking about is like Rosh Hashanah is the gross amount, and then, then the the... The allowance is kind of like a monthly or a weekly, depending on... No, he said not, He says daily. He says daily. One opinion is daily, Yoni, and one opinion is every moment. Yeah, but, 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 but good, good, good analogy. The gross versus the actual allowance. And, and, and by the way, he says another Nakuda. It could be the allowance will be a zero because it remains aloof. And guess what? It happens sometimes. Happened with my great aunt, my mother's, my father's aunt. Didn't have kids. Asked the Rebbe for a bracha. Got a bracha. The Rebbe said, review the laws of Taras HaMashpacha. Did that. Six months went by. Nothing happened. Asked the Rebbe again for a bracha. The Rebbe didn't answer. My father went to the Mashpia in his yeshiva and asked, what's going on? And the first time the Rebbe answered, the second time he didn't. Mashpia said, possibly. The Alter Rebbe says, when you get us a Kodesh 14... Every year on Rosh Hashanah, new energy, a new light comes into the world. The Rebbe saw last year there was a blessing for it. These six months that went by, went into the new year, he didn't see a blessing for whatever reason. He didn't see a blessing that it can be materialized. And why? Only God knows. The Rebbe doesn't know. But he couldn't give you a blessing for that to materialize because it, it, it wasn't in the cards. So these, these, are, these are unknown things at the end of the day, you know. And this, by the way, shouldn't stop us from davening and learning and asking and asking a tzaddik to intervene. A tzaddik has a tzaddik has koyach. And we have to call upon the koyach of a tzaddik. I know over the years people didn't have children, for example, they in a way nudged the Rebbe. And when, by Fabrengans, they would hold up their cup, every Fabrengan, and, and make L'chaim and have a mind, bless me, I should have a child. I knew someone who had illness in the family, I saw this myself for years at Fabrengans. He would go over to the Rebbe towards, the, between the first and second talk of Shabbos. And no one stopped him, because he was a very sincere man. 
And he asked the Rebbe every single Shabbos Fabrengen for years. I saw this. Yonis probably saw it. I don't know if he remembers. But he should have seen it too. And he asked the Rebbe for a bracha. And people, so we asked, what is he, what, first of all, you know, what is he asking? Or why is he being allowed to do it? No one else is allowed to do it. And he was asking for a bracha because his, his wife was ill and, you know, and wanted her to be, be cured. So that's the job of a tzaddik. The job of a tzaddik is to not to have mercy on him, but to nudge him to, to access the bracha from Hashem. Okay? You, you know, you have to know when, when not to nudge and who not to nudge, and then you have to know who to nudge. It's a very important lesson. Because sometimes we nudge the wrong people. You nudge the wrong people, you ain't getting anywhere. You just, you just remain a big nudge. But if you nudge the right people and the right person, you ultimately score. You, you make the right. Yes, Moshe. So I, okay, so how are you supposed to know who's the right person who's the wrong person? Oh, for that you have to learn a lot of chesidus and say a lot of l'chaim and, and, and say krishma and with tears and, and become a chesidus shayit and you'll know. You, you do all those three things, guaranteed, you will know. But it doesn't come from chocolate and potato chips and sleeping eight hours and playing golf and watching good uh, sports and all that. You ain't going to know from that. You know sports, you know stocks, and you know many good things, and it's great. But you're not going to know what you're asking. But when you, when you refine yourself, you know, they say an expression in the, in the yeshiva world, you're on the right path, you know, uh, you know when you're in the, in the Gemara mode, you meet each other. You know, when you're in the Hasidic mode, you meet each other. When you're in the spiritual holy mode, you're going to meet each other. And, 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 and trust me. <laughs> so just keep on doing right things and you will see it's going to fall into your lap. And don't allow anyone or anything to persuade you otherwise. If it's in your gut and you feel it, you have an intuition, go with it. Anyway, we have to fabring about that. We have to fabring about that because it's an important point, what you said, a very important point regarding his kashas to a tzaddik, to any tzaddik. Like I told you, for the third time, that story with the, the, the Litvak who meets the, the Rebbe in Yerushalayim and all of a sudden he becomes his chassid. What are you going to say? He became his chassid because he heard such great Torah from him. No. no that, that's possible, you know. It's more of a, a deep heart, emotional thing that touches him, and it just grows on you. And when it grows on you, you go with it. If you don't go with it, then you're, you're your own worst enemy. You know, there's a point where a person has to leave intellect and jump into faith. A lot of people have a problem with this. They can't leave the intellect, and they get stuck there, and they never make the leap of faith. Anyway, we should discuss it out of our brain. Let's continue inside. As we learned earlier, the when you have much chesed, then you can have chesed in everything. Children, health, and parnasa. And sometimes it's not possible to get it in everything. Only two of them. Or one of them. And he says, even if the blessing is for all three matters, there's a difference whether you get a little or or you get a little. Zet holy bechlolus kids was next page two ninety one hachesed brashon v'yem kipurim uchalayil bechlal v'el mufratim b'ni bechlal and that depends on what's in your treasure house, which is the budget has been established on the ten days between brashon and kipur. Kol mokem yesh dinu mishpat bufrat bechol yoyim. Nevertheless, notwithstanding all of the above, we have judgment every day. Ma yitzday of yom shuk machesed azeh. What will be come of this chesed that's in my storage house? 
Ukmoyim yesh bev shonos al chesed and it's available to shonos. It can be with you based vodim. For example, will it be possible that this chesed that I've been allotted to on the ten days, mahani magimol anal is a base vodim you? You're getting two out of three. Which two? In bebon of achaya, if children in health, or mezayin of achaya, or parnosa in health, or kedayim ukmoyim does boil as we explained earlier. So that you know is is decided. Every day. And, th- and that's why it makes sense, Yoni, why it's every day in every moment. Because every day changes. The one day you're getting it in health, one day you're getting it in Parnosa, and one day you're getting it in, 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 in children. And Chas Vashol, one day you're not getting anything. And even if it's possible to get it in all three ways, nevertheless, that's what I just told you. Part of the part of the court case of the judgment is maybe it's going to remain aloof in the spiritual, in the world to come. But here in this world, they're not going to have it, Chas Vashol. You'll say, well, it's Kavaldik, you have it for the world to come. I want it here. What's the expression? We live one time. I mean, which is not a Jewish attitude, but you know. No, Hashem says, sorry. This issue you have to wait for Olam Haba. Let's continue. Because in the Chesed budget of Rosh Hashanah, it wasn't recognizable yet what will take place in Shem Because over there, it's not the domain to decide the allowance, as Yoni said, used that word earlier. The allowance is only later. In the budgetary committee, remains in the budgetary committee. That depends every day on the heavenly court. And that's up to us, our behavior. So is the judgment in the chambers of Bria. He wraps it up, summarizes it here. So both are true. This is the final reconciliation of, of the two contradictory Talmudic statements. The Iker Adin, the primary judgment regarding the budget of Chesed nevertheless, the daily statement that you judge daily or momentarily every moment there is a complete judgment every day. He will continue now going into more details but in the next chapter, but we'll stop here. And uh, it's uh, it's interesting. It's an interesting uh, way. One thing's for sure: this analysis and this explanation keeps a, a Jew on their feet. Because if you know that every day, and every moment, you have an opportunity to make. The, the hashpo of Hashem come more into your life in the various ways, you're more attentive. If you think, for example, Yoni, oh, listen, Hashem decided on Rosh Hashanah, so whatever I do today on Tuesday, the 14th of Tavis, doesn't really make a difference. So why should I really invest? It's not going to make a difference. This, 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 Thing that this section, this idea that we're learning says, no, it makes a difference. Look at the Rashab's last words, Lefi Maisov. The judgment today is based on my Maisim. And I really believe this. And who am I? I mean, the, the Torah says it. But I'm saying it, it, it's, it's true. It's true. If you pay attention, you, you, you should be able to feel, sense, see, observe, understand that there is a difference. Hevra, have a great day. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Zaygesund. Bye-bye. Not tomorrow.